You are now listening to Changing Lives, a podcast presented by Mount Gilead Full Gospel International Ministries, hosted by co pastor Elena Robertson. You have just tuned in to Changing Lives. We are changing lives with the Word of God. Glory to God. I come to you doing this podcast to share something that the Lord has dropped in my spirit that I think will be a blessing to you. And it's going to provoke you. I promise you that. But I think that you'll be better in the end and as we move forward. And so I thank God uh, for this opportunity. I want to start out with uh, Philippians, the third chapter, the 13th through the 14th verse. And this particular scripture, for those of you who are Gileanites, you know this scripture because this has been our base scripture. Let me tell you something. God is not a man that he should lie. And if he said it, you can best believe it can come to pass and it's coming to pass. And so this was a scripture that our apostle, Apostle Leroy Thompson, gave us at the beginning of the year that this is a word. And this is a word that does not pass away. This is a word that's still true. And it connects to some things that I want to share with you uh, to provoke you uh, to stay the course. And so in Philippians, the third chapter, starting at the 13th verse, it says, Brethren, this is Paul talking, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. And before I go into this, when you think about Paul, You think about the life that he lived, how he was a a, a ruler uh, uh, and and just um, a religious ruler and had accomplished many things, a learned man. I mean, whatever he did, he did with his whole heart. And he had an encounter with God on the road on Damascus and everything changed just like that. And, um, So keep that in the back of your mind. So it says in 13th verses, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God and Christ Jesus. And so the Lord brought that scripture to my heart because I had um, an opportunity to to do some pressing (laughs) this weekend. And he he showed me some things that I needed to to line up according to his word. And um, because sometimes you can have so many things coming your way that it's like you, you lose sight of, okay, I'm still pressing for the mark. You know, not allowing pressure to weigh me down, but I am pushing and pressing the pressure away and pressing for that mark of the prize of the high calling in God. And so, you know, so I I had um, the other day I had I had a pretty long day. It was it was um, I have to admit that it was pretty challenging because I was working with um, homeschooling and a number of different things that I had on my plate and. Um, by the end of the day, I was like, oh my goodness. And so I hadn't worked out because I usually try to work out at least three times a week, but sometimes I, I'm able to squeeze in at least uh, a, another uh, time to work out and, and get in four a week. And so I realized, man, I had, I had only done one workout that week. And I was like, you know, I, I really need a workout and I also need to just decompress. <laughs> and so um, so it was late that night. It was like around 930. Usually I work out early in the morning. And so so anyway, so I was like, well, it'll do, it'll do my body good. It'll do my mind good. So I went ahead and did my walk. And as I was walking, I was walking on my Peloton that I was blessed with for my birthday. And um uh, but I had an opportunity to just reflect and to think and to think about the day and to think about, you know, moving forward from from that day. And um, the Lord just dropped in my spirit, you know, that um, I have to really come to terms with some things, you know. Um, you know, we're hearing a lot of things about uncertain times. And this other uh, thing that we hear is our new normal. And, you know, that doesn't set set on right with me because this is not normal. <laughs> you know, as you were going through this pandemic, this is not my normal and it's not my new normal either. It may be what I'm passing through, 
but it's not my normal, that's for sure. Um, however, what I want to focus on is what is it going to look like on the other side? Now, you know, we have to come to terms with things won't be the same um, and that things will be different. Why? Because I believe for myself and I know for you as well, and you, you have to recognize that, that after you come through something that, 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 that really touches all aspects of your being, your spirit, your soul, your body, um, your, your intellect, your emotions, uh, your social, um, you know, um, um, being, you know, when it, when something like that, it, it, it comes from you and, and it, and it touches every part of your being, something has to change and some, and, and many things have changed. And sometimes what we find ourselves trying to do is we're trying to get back to, to the way it was. And we have to recognize that it's okay to, to accept that it's not going to be the same. And we don't want to be the same because we should ever be evolving. We should ever be changing and becoming better and better at who we are, a better version of who we are. And when I look at that scripture that I started out with, it talks about, you know, there, there's some things that Paul, you know, he recognized he accomplished a whole lot of things. And then after he had that Damascus Road experience and he began to flat out serve God with just as much tenacity and fervence and vengeance that he had when he was in the world. He he used that same effort, that same power, um, that same determination for the kingdom of God. And you can best believe he suffered persecution for it. I mean, he went through a lot. I mean, uh, he was ridiculed. He was mocked. He was beaten. I mean, you you just name it. He was shipwrecked, you know, just uh, all kinds of things happened. But he never gave up. And, and he was able to come to this resolve that there's one thing that he was determined to do, you know. And um, and so, so <laughs> but in the midst of that one thing that he talked about, he he realized that were some things that he had to make sure that were straight first before he got that one thing. And that was forgetting those things that are behind. And, you know, for some of us, we have uh, suffered loss, uh, loss of a loved one, loss of a job, um, um, loss of relationships, loss of just a number of different things. And, and loss is something that it, 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 it's not something that you can just just like that get over with. You have to process some things in your spirit. You have to resolve some things in your mind. And some people can can process, you know, um, you know, can handle processing things like that a little better than others. Some it takes longer to process, and some people never go through the process. And if they never go through the process, then they they instead of getting better they get worse. And I'm determined that do, during this process, there's things that, that we're experiencing. You know, I mean, we have people that, that, that we love, that we hold dear. We have, we have church members who have relatives and, and various people that are, that have lost their life and tragedy and different things happen. And not even doing just pandemic, but just in life in general, there are things that we have experienced. I know, um, you know, for me, if you, if you've listened to any of the previous podcasts, you know that I lost my father at a very, very young age when I was four years old. And then, you know, in my teen years, I lost two of my brothers. So our family was very well acquainted with, with loss. And so, and, and it is, it is something, you know, so I can, I can sympathize. I can identify with loss. Um, even though there are degrees of loss that I have yet to, and may not, I pray may not ever have to experience as some of you may have experienced. And so loss, it can be a beast, but but that beast can be tamed as far as the effect that it can have on your life and um and and how um the effect in such a way that it can you can get to that point where you can decide on whether you're going to go forward 
or you're going to stand still or you're going to go backwards. And so in this scripture, Paul is telling us to forget those things that are behind and reach for those things which are before. So not only loss, but just change. You know, there's a, a lot of change that has happened. You know, you know, as even as we looked at the loss, I mean, people have lost jobs, they've lost businesses. Um, you know, some some people are are not, you know, are trying to, you know, to hold on to their businesses and 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 to salvage whatever they can. Um, but then, you know, as 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 we go on, there's there's other things, you know, that uh that we de- that we're dealing with and change. I mean, change um, is a good thing, but some change can be a bad thing if we don't handle it the right way. And certainly there are a lot of things that have changed, you know? And so, um, so as I look at this scripture for me, I, as I was reflecting, as I was walking, I realized, okay, things are, are not going to be the same. And one of the things you have to recognize is that all of us are in the boat of change. All of us, all of us are in the boat of adjusting to, you know, different things, you know, and even though there's some things that we don't let go, we don't let go of our faith. We don't let go of some great things that we may be able to hold on to, but yet and still we recognize that we as a person, we've changed the way we do things, uh, have changed. And for some, if you're trying to hold on to the way that you have done things, then you, this is going to be a hard road to trod. Um, when you recognize that after we were released from quarantine, we're released from all these different things that you're not necessarily going to be able to do things the way that you used to be able to do it. Church cannot be done the way it used to be done. It's just, it's just a fact. You know, and so and so as we look at the dynamics of 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 all the things that we um, that 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 touch our lives, you have to begin to evaluate what has changed and what do you have to come to terms with to say, OK, I can't keep moping over this and holding on to this. I have to recognize I have to go through this process, whether it's loss which of course we know with loss comes grief, um, whether it's um, dealing with, okay, accepting that you have to change. You know, I read a book years ago where it talked about um, uh, change and how we can hem and haw about, you know, oh, this has changed and that has changed and, and you can fight it tooth and nail, but, but, but the only person that is hurting is you if you're not willing to make adjustments for the better, not make adjustments to accommodate and to, to, to compromise your faith or to compromise who you are as a Christian. Um, no, but to make adjustments to say, this is an opportunity for me to be more excellent. This is an opportunity for me to go higher in God. Okay. So you got to look at that. And so that book that I read was called who moved my cheese. It was just a cute little allegory about these, these, these mice that were in a maze. They were looking for some cheese and their cheese was moved and it was considered as change in their lives. And each mouse, that was three mice. And in each of them, um, handled change differently. One just him and hawed about how somebody moved my cheese. He murmured, he complained and, 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 but he didn't look for ways to go find the cheese. The other, you know, uh, you know, just, just, you know, went and did some things, but after a while kind of gave in, but then there was one that just went and just kept, you know, uh, looking. And when he came to one dead end, he turned around and went back the other way and went looking and, and just kept, uh, moving forward until he found where the cheese was. And so it was a cute little story, but with so, so many principles and truths that came out of it. And so I say to you, uh, where are you at in the midst of this crisis, in the midst of this pandemic? Because certainly, if you will, you our cheese has been moved, okay? Our security blanket, our our comfort zones have been moved. You know, for some major tangible things such as jobs and finances and, and people, people, I mean, you can't put a price on people's lives. I mean, but nonetheless, there is a change that has happened. And um, how, how, how are we going to handle that change 
when we move forward. And so as I resolve in my spirit to recognize, okay, things are not going to be the same. So let me not stay stuck in where I am. Let me resolve that I'm going to shift and adjust to become the better me that I can be, you know? And, um, and I say that to you, th- that you need to look at what in my life can I do even right now? Because, you know, you, you don't want to use the, the, the excuse that, you know, well, I'm stuck in this house. I'm stuck here. I'm stuck there. No, you're not stuck. You're not stuck unless your mind is stuck. Okay. And so when you release your mind from being stuck, which means you, when you recognize the possibilities that you have to dream, to create, and all of these things in your mind, then there's some things that you can actually begin to shift and, and to change on the inward person, and then even shift and change and put some things into place, even before certain things are lifted so that we can be free to move and go about and do whatever, okay? Because change starts on the inside of us, all right? And so I just want to encourage you that that you look at yourself, look at yourself, spirit, soul, and body. What are some things that you can work on while you where you are to make yourself better, not bitter, because bitter is oh, you know, you're, you're moping, you, you, you're blaming this person, you, 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 you're blaming the president, you're blaming the governor, you're you're fussing about this, you're fussing about that, you're becoming bitter. Take this opportunity to become better, and to say, you know what, I'm gonna leave that to God. What I'm gonna do is position myself to put myself in a position where I can hear from God, and God can tell me how to allow him to move in my life so that I can become better. You know, for me, I'm working on patience. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that may be my lifelong, my lifelong uh, uh, um, challenge to work on that patience, you know? And so, and certainly that's what I, I want to become better. I don't want to come out of here, and, uh, out of this situation, out of this crisis that's going on, and, and I'm still struggling with patience. So I have this opportunity to be stronger, to get into the word of God, to allow it to make me better, to allow me to learn how to let patience have its perfect work in me. That's a process of perfecting. And how do I allow it to to work in me in such a way where where I don't go too far into being impatient, that I can catch it before I get there? You know, and so, so it's something to think about. I mean, so that's for me, that's one of my things, you know, so, but what are some other things, you know, what can you work at becoming better at? Can you become a better wife? Can you become a better husband? How can you become a better communicator? Can you become, become a better father, a better mother? Can you become a better cook? (laughs) Hey, (laughs) <laughs> that's what I'm working on. Hey, uh, becoming a better cook, you know, cause I'm one that, you know, I don't like, you know, that's not my thing. I don't, you know, I'll do what I have to do and that's what I'm doing now, but I'm recognizing that I can have it, do it with a, a better, a good attitude and become a better cook. Look at that. Look at God working all things out together for the good. You know, y- your family structure, becoming more lovable in your family, becoming more sensitive in your family, becoming more um, uh, 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 transparent. You know, all those things are characteristics that make us better. That when we leave out of here and, you know, when we do get a chance to to get back into our churches and to get back in fellowship with one another, to hug one another and to kiss one another. How long will it last before impatience sets in, before uh, unforgiveness begins to settle in? See, we got we to gotta safeguard ourselves from that because it, 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 what the enemy meant for bad, what he meant to wipe us out with, we need to take this thing and say, you know what? When I get back, they're going to see a different person that I'm going to be better. They're going to see that I'm not going to wear, that I'm not wearing as much as I used to, that that I've learned how to put worry in a bag, hallelujah, and throw it and and cast it away, hallelujah, that I've learned how to, how to become a better leader, that I've learned how to, um, to become a better me to, you know, because even for me, I'm, 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 um, 
uh, listening to parenting. <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do. Parenting courses. I'm taking a parenting course and, and perfecting this thing. Look, I'm I'm not a, a neophyte. I'm not I'm not green behind my ears in this thing. But I do know that times have changed and things have changed, and I'm learning to do well. Hey, I'm I'm the m- mother of four. I have three adult children. I have two that are married, one that has two children, and then another one, he's on his way. Hallelujah. Then I have a young one who's 11 years old and things are different. So there's some things that, and even not to say I was perfect, even with those three older ones, because there were some things that I learned, but there's still some things I have to work on to become a better me, to become a better parent. And so it's worth the investment that when I get out of here, Hallelujah. That when I break out, hallelujah, break out of this quarantine, break out of this pandemic, glory to God, and have an opportunity to touch other people's lives, to impart it to others, that I'm a better person. Hallelujah. That my body is better, that that I'm not uh, binging out on junk food, that I'm not allowing the enemy to cause me to be in a state where, where I, uh, that I'm eating more than I normally eat because of nervousness, because of anxiety, because of, of fear and because of fretting that the enemy is causing me to eat and, and to and to and to gain weight and to get all out of shape and and, and allowing things to to work against um, the systems that God has set up in my body you know your heart and and your mind and all of those things you know no no I'm I'm coming out better because I'm working a better plan while I'm in this thing right now you know so working out you know that 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 you know, I'm working out better than I've ever worked out before that I'm watching what I'm eating, that, that, that I'm not throwing everything out the window, that I'm still staying my course to become a better me. And so I challenge you, what are you working on during this time? Are you doing more talking about what's going on than you're doing meditating on what God can do and will do in you during this time? What's going on? What's going on with your mind? Are you, is your mind uh, uh, focused in on, oh, I, I can't wait to get back to church. I can't wait get, get, to get back to church. And that's wonderful because I, I, you know, I, I can't wait either, but, but I'm having to wait. So while I'm waiting, what am I doing? What are you doing while you're waiting? And so this is our opportunity because God has, has set this stage so that we don't have an excuse not to position ourselves to, to allow him to download guidance and direction and, and to give us some things that we can work on and we can do. There's even physical projects you need to do around your house. Make your house better. Make your home better. Come on, there's a lot of things that we have on our to-do list. Some things we, we, we wouldn't even dare put on our to-do list because we won't allow ourselves to go there. We procrastinate. We put things off. This is our opportunity to learn how to, 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 to defeat procrastination. Glory to God. And so I encourage you to do what you can, hallelujah, to become a better, better, better person. Glory to God. And so I had my mind made up. You know, I think about the scripture in James 1, 2 through 4, where it says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, so, 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 so we can count this a joy. We don't have to be, Oh, I got to work on this. I got to work on myself. No, I'm counting it all joy because I'm becoming a better brother, better sister. You becoming a better brother. I'm becoming a better sister. Hallelujah. Uh, we're becoming a better us. And so that means we'll become a better church when we come back that after we get finished running around the church, hugging each other, yelling and screaming, we'll stop and we'll say, oh my God, I don't even recognize you. You're better than what you were when you went through. You know, isn't that like God? I'm reminded of the scripture where it talks about how we'll go through the fire. And when you come out, you won't even have the smell of smoke on you, but you will somehow be better. Because how many know that when you go through a fire, it has the ability to 
purge and to burn off those things that have no substance, those things that 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 are shallow, those things that are weights, those things that are cares, those things that are sin. It has the ability to burn those things off. So don't fight trying to get out the fire quicker than what you need to. Take the time to allow that fire to purge you and to purify you, that you come forth as pure gold, that you'll be golden. And you know what pure gold, it has a, a purity to it. It has... It has a shine to it. It has an appeal to it. Where you know, you know, because we, you know, we, we like fine things. We like nice things. But but when you see something that looks um, not as good a quality, that that when when that gold is purified through the fire, it 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 is the best quality that it can be, and that's what we want to be. And so we we want, you know, yeah, we, after we finish yelling, screaming and shouting, who knows, it may take a while for us to stop hallelujah, or to mellow out and to balance that thing out. But let me tell you something, you know, we can never, we can never hold back on our praise, never, you know, muffle, you know, uh, proclaiming the goodness of God. But when we stop long enough just to see each other, let us see that pure gold in one another. Let us see that, oh my God, you've been with God. You've been working on some things that cannot be denied. And let me tell you something. I think of, of the scripture where it talks about those, those 10 versions. And when you look at those 10 versions, there was 10 of them, five of them were prepared and five of them won. And there are some things that God has for us. You know, his things, he's working with us now, but when we transition, when we shift, hallelujah, and we're able to be released physically to go back to the same, you know, the different places that we uh, uh, are able to go to, our church, our jobs, or just whatever it may be. Um, I, I just believe that that as we be like those five versions that took the time to prepare ourselves, took the time to get before God and, and, and to allow him to pour the oil in us that oil that we'll be able to use that when we need to light our lamps, hallelujah, to be that light of the world that we'll be prepared when the Father comes and say, okay, it's time. Hey, it's breakout time. <laughs> Glory to God. We'll be ready. And we won't be like those five virgins that that just kind of, you know, laid on the couch and, and binged out on Netflix and, you know, uh, uh, you know, munched and, on chips and, you know, just murmured and complained and was on the phone and talking about this and talking about that. And then they realized, oh my gosh, the transition has come. Oh, wait a minute. You mean now is the time? Yeah, now is the time. And so, but they were scrambling and trying to get oil from the other five that were prepared. And the other five were wise enough to recognize, no, we prepared for ourselves just as you should have prepared for yourself. I, this is, this, you have to run your race. This is an individual thing. You have to prepare yourself. You can't blame anybody else for you not being prepared. So I encourage you and I provoke you. Take this time. Don't murmur. Don't complain. Stop yin yanging <laughs> and get yourself in a position where you can allow God to, to, to work some things in you, spirit, soul, and body. And if you get before him, he'll show you. He'll show you what to work with first and, and how to position yourself and how to allow him to pour that oil in your lamp so that you'll be ready for that transition. Glory to God. So I say to you, make up your mind that you're going to be better. And the better starts now. You start working at that being better now, working at being more excellent, finding out that more excellent way. For some, you know, it's, you know, you may have homeschooling, you may have to work, you may have to cook, you may have to do whatever. All of those things are on your plate, you know, but I'm here to tell you that you can allow God to be, to cause you to be a more excellent organizer, to be proficient and to be precise. You can do that if you get your mind straight, 
if you get your heart right and you get yourself in the position to say, okay, God, Show me how to do this thing, that that I'm not going to have the testimony anymore that I'm not organized. I'm not going to have the testimony anymore that I'm not that that that, that um I'm not excellent that I that that I'm not a good leader. I'm not going to have have the testimony that you know my marriage is real shaky. No, I'm going to work on me to become the better wife, to become the better husband, to become the better person, so that I can contribute and be an asset to what God has planned for me on the other side of this pandemic. Glory to God. So I just encourage you. Let me pray with you. Um, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord God, that you work all things out together for the good. And certainly, Lord God, you are working some things out together for the good. And I thank you for that. We thank you for that, God. We surrender to you, Father. We surrender to you now, God. Um, we want, we'll, we stop fighting this thing, uh, not to give in to, 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 to the pressures and, and all that. No, but we don't allow it to drag us along by what's coming out of our mouth and what we're allowing to get in our spirits. But we're determined that we're going to stop the course of going the opposite direction of what you planned us to go in and to set our feet on a path where we're positioning ourselves to become and to be better. It's not long now, but God, we still have this opportunity to say, God, the moments that I have, help me to get in position. Help me to allow you to pour the oil in in my lamp. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you've equipped us, that you've given us everything we need. And I pray in Jesus' name that you have these downloads, downloads at night, downloads in our dreams, downloads as we're walking to and fro and doing whatever we're doing, downloads, God, of of order, downloads of excellence, downloads of, of things to do, downloads of what needs to be perfected, downloads of how to become a better person, downloads of how to organize, downloads of how to, to manage and and get the finances, the records, and all that straight. Download of how to how to um, to be proactive, and not to be on the rebound, but be proactive in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord God, as we take this moment to 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 resolve in our spirits that just like Paul, this one thing that we do. We're going to press towards the prize of the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And in order to do that, we must forget those things that are behind. We must reach for those things that are before and press for that mark. And I thank you, God, that we're going to continue to do that in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Determine to be better. This has been another episode of Changing Lives. Be sure to subscribe to stay updated on new episodes. Also, find us on the web at mountgileadfgim.org. And follow us on Instagram at mountgileadfgim.org.